Y'all can clearly see it's Tyler. And it's Cameron, and we're not in our usual location. No, we are outside. We're in the public. We're in the community. We're right, we're right next to the courthouse, but why are we out here in the snow? It's the Eagles edition. It's the Eagles edition. edition of the Eagles. I. So. So everyone knows the Super Bowl's coming up. Mm -hmm. The Eagles are in the Super Bowl. Yes, so. versus the Patriots. And Narstown is hosting a, um, a Eagles pep rally. Yeah, so there's people from the community. There's band. There's a basketball team. Girls and boys. So we have a lot of people just ready to spread this Eagles love. Exactly. In this two degree weather. I'm yeah, sorry, Cameron. Yeah, in this like two, two degree. Degrees. It's snowing. It's probably like this in Minnesota times. Like, I mean, mine is like 12. So we brought Minnesota to Narstown. Narstown in Minnesota. So y'all can look at this Minnesota. And we're going to start off with the La Entrevista with um, Principal Roth, I believe, right? An interview with Principal Roth. Yes. Yeah. The interview with Principal Roth about the new cell phone policy. Yes, we have a new cell phone policy. And I know, so now I know there's green zone, there's yellow zones, and the red zone. In the red zone. Oh, it sounds like football lingo to me. Wow. They, only the green zone. But you mean yellow cards. See? Oh, yeah. That's what I'll I'm saying. You, I'll get you because you'll have like a yellow the card. Red zone, like the end zone. Uh, go uh, Eagles! Go Eagles. Definitely go Eagles. <laughs> Y'all see that in the background? Look, look, look. It's, it's cold. But we are true. There are true Eagle fans out here. It's true Eagle true fans. Eagle you see Karen fans. rock from head to toe. She got, look at that. That's tough. I need that. My, yeah, Chris, I my Christmas gift, my birthday gift. So it's coming. Why don't we go check out the interview with Principal Roth and let's go. Definitely. Good morning. My name is Jerome Campbell. I'm here with Principal, Principal Roth. We're here to speak about the, self, the new cell phone policy. Good morning. Good morning, Principal Roth. Good morning. What is the new policy, and how does it contrast with the old policy? So the old policy is more of a one-size-fits-all. Anytime you're not in the cafeteria, you're not supposed to use your phone at all. Um, and we think at this point, you know, it's 2018. Cell phones are going to be a part of our lives forever. And part of what we have to do is to teach everyone how to use them responsibly. So inside of the classroom, your teachers are going to have the ability to utilize a red, yellow, green system, um, kind of like a traffic light. And so a green light, you won't see a green light in the classroom. Green light is kind of what you have in the cafeteria now. Um, you know, you can use your phone so long as it doesn't disrupt others or cause a safety hazard. Um, so you can listen to music in the cafeteria now. You can do that in the cafeteria and in the hallway moving forward. Um, we just ask that, you know, you're not hooking it up to your Bluetooth speaker. You know, you're not blasting it through your headphones so everyone else can hear it. I personally am going to ask that no one listens to country music because I think it's awful. <laughs> and I'm also going to just ask that people use those phones responsibly. So you shouldn't be taking pictures or videotaping people without their permission or consent. You can't promote anything like harassment, bullying, or violence through your phone in school. Uh, but other than that, you know, we're trusting you because we know we can trust you. Inside of the classroom, if the teacher has a red light up or a red sign up, then that means you shouldn't have your phone. The phone doesn't apply to today's lesson. It's nothing but a distraction. It should be out of sight, out of mind. Uh, but the difference is, is that now the teacher has the ability to put a yellow light up. And that yellow light means that your teacher is telling you that in a manner that they say, you can use your phone now. So some examples might be that maybe they're giving you independent work. And if the teacher is comfortable with it, and they say, while you're working on this, if you want to listen to your headphones, you can, then it is permitted. Uh, they may say, we're going to be writing an essay and you need to find three sources. You can use your phone to do research through your phone. Then that's permitted. However, your teacher also has the ability to monitor what you're doing. So if they say you can use your phone as a calculator and they walk by and you are on Snapchat talking with your friends, they're going to tell you the phone needs to go away because you demonstrated you're not responsible enough to handle that. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, is what the policy is all about. It's trusting you because we know that we can. Okay. When will the new policy take force? So the policy is going to begin on February 5th, next week. Uh, so next Monday, after we come back, we're celebrating an Eagle Super Bowl win, and we're also going to celebrate the implementation of our new cell phone policy. Why is this policy starting so late in the school year? It's a great question. Uh, I'm not usually one that's a fan of major changes halfway through a school year. Um, you know, 
this is a basketball game, we wouldn't change the rules in the third quarter. Uh, but I think this is something that has been talked about so much. Students talk about it, teachers talk about it, I talk about it. Uh, we know that it's something that needs to change, and it needs to change in two ways. Part of it is we need to, again, show that we trust you, that you can handle that responsibility. Uh, we know that you can. We know that day in and day out, Norristown Eagles do great things. So we want to trust you and show that you're responsible. Part of that also is that our job isn't just to teach you social studies, English, and math. Our job is to also teach you how to be a productive citizen. And part of that now, which is different from when I was in high school, is you have to learn how to make the phone a part of your life that helps you be productive, but is not a distraction. So even when you go to college, when you're in the workplace, all of these things, you know, there was a senator who is now being ridiculed because during the State of the Union address, she was playing Candy Crush on her phone. It was caught on camera. I guarantee you there will be people who won't vote for her because she was not acting in a mature, responsible manner. Our job is to teach you those same things. You shouldn't be walking through the hallway uh, talking on your phone because you shouldn't be in a store at the counter talking on your phone either. That's not proper etiquette. And so I think if we teach you those things, and again, the only issues that we really have with cell phones, other than distractions in the classroom, are when a few people use them for the wrong thing. Maybe there's an argument or a fight and people are videotaping it. That's helping to promote that kind of violence. We're not going to tolerate that. You know, people who are texting or through social media who are bullying, uh, that there's going to continue to be zero tolerance for that. Everyone who doesn't engage in those behaviors, we're going to give you a little more leeway. That's why we think we need to do that now instead of waiting until September. Okay. How, do you how did you develop this policy with staff and students? So the cell phone policy discussion came up as a part of uh, a number of teachers who volunteered their time to talk about our code of conduct, what should change, you know, potentially. And one of those things that we talked a lot about was cell phones. Um, the policy that we are implementing, to be honest, in many ways we've stolen from other schools who've implemented <laughs> similar policies. Uh, Sun Valley High School in Delaware County being one of them. They're very well known for um, you know, getting student buy-in into their disciplinary policies uh, and in every classroom there. And some of our teachers got a chance to visit there. Um, and my former school was something that we stole from Sun Valley and it really worked. Um, and students have expressed enough times that you, know, you want to be treated as young adults. And so a big part of this, your teachers were very emphatic that they do trust you and that they want to be able to use your phone as a tool for instruction and they also want to be able to hold people accountable for those few who can't handle that. Okay. Will cell phones still be taken away? Cell phones will still be confiscated. Um, cell phones, ideally we won't have nearly as many being confiscated. You know right now if you're in a classroom and your phone is visible um, then security is called and you're supposed to give your phone to security right away. Um, what we're hoping is that, you know, we, um, we're hoping that by us making it more clear what the expectations are classroom to classroom, we know that not every teacher was enforcing this policy the same way. And to a student, that can be confusing. If your first period teacher doesn't care if your cell phone is out, but your second period teacher is really strict, sometimes that makes the strict teacher look bad, but in reality, they're doing exactly what they were told. So what we're hoping now is you walk into a classroom, you see whether it's yellow or red, and even during class that might change. If I'm doing a lecture for the first 10 minutes, it's going to be red. Your eyes should be on me. We're having a class discussion. But then as we get into that independent piece, if I'm okay with you using it, I change it to yellow. And I tell you very clearly what you can use it for. Um, so in that case, your phone wouldn't get confiscated. Phones will get confiscated if it is a continuous distraction or if you do anything that is you know, a 300 or 400 level violation of the code of conduct, the bullying, the harassment, the videotaping fights, um, you know, sending inappropriate images, um, all of that stuff doesn't just lead to your phone being confiscated and lead to school discipline, but can also lead to law enforcement. And we want to stay as far away from that as we can. By law enforcement, you mean, involve, you mean involving the police? Sure. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I think this is important for folks to know. We've had a couple students who have gotten into legal trouble this year because of things they've done on their phone, um, whether it was videotaping a fight and spreading that video around to incite violence uh, or using it to harass, intimidate, and bully people. Um, you know, when we say that we have zero tolerance for that, we're not joking. I want you to feel safe when you come to school. I want you to learn that that's something that can't happen. Uh, and I think it's our job to help teach that, too. 
because sometimes uh, the kids who get in trouble for those things have no idea how serious it is. And so it's our job to teach that. Is it a three strikes policy? How will this be implemented? So I wouldn't say it's a clear cut three strikes policy. Uh, I think it's kind of more along those lines, but um, you know, cell phones are a distraction, just like talking in class, just like sleeping in class, just like passing notes. I know you guys don't pass notes anymore because you text each other. Uh, but the idea is that if a teacher makes it known that the cell phone shouldn't be out, or if they say you can use your phone as a dictionary, but you're off on the side playing Candy Crush like that lawmaker was, uh, that, you know, ideally the teacher should be able to redirect you, uh, you know, walk over and say, you know, don't put your phone away. Um, and if you do that right away and then it's not seen again, then it shouldn't be a major distraction and it shouldn't lead to using your phone. But if you don't reply, respond to that, if you're not mature enough to handle the fact that you maybe slipped up for a second, uh, your teacher redirected you, if you can't handle that, then at that point, that's when your phone's going to be taken away. Okay. How will, re how will repeat offenders that ignore the policy be handled? So I liken it to uh, bathroom passes, right? Um, you can use the restroom when you're in class, you know, when your teacher says that it's the appropriate time, when they allow you to use the pass, and when you go. However, there are a select few students who can't handle that responsibility. You know, they go out on the pass and they're gone for 20 minutes. Um, or they are down eating lunch for the third time. Lunch is good, but you only get one a day. Um, and for those students, we contact their teachers and say, guess what? Without administrative permission, they don't get to use the hall pass anymore because they've shown that they're not mature enough to handle that. We're talking about 15 to 20 kids school-wide. So out of a school of almost 2,000 kids, it's very few. And I think cell phones would be the same way. If you repeatedly demonstrate that you can't handle this responsibility, then we're going to communicate with all of your teachers and with your family uh, that even if the yellow light is on in the classroom, you don't get to use it. If everyone else is able to use a calculator on their phone, you have shown you can't handle that, so you're going to have to use an actual calculator. Um, and so I think that is where the repeat offenders will be held accountable. How will the school act? How will the school act when the student does not fulfill the, these rules? Well, punishment is, is just a small part of, of teaching people the right way, right? You know, most people follow rules not because they're afraid of being punished, but because they want to do the right thing. Um, sometimes in schools, we fall short of teaching our expectations. That's why something like this is so important to me. You know, if you're in math class and the teacher asks you what's five plus five and you say eight, the teacher says, no, that's <laughs> not right. Let me show you why. Um, sometimes with discipline or behavior, we don't do that, though. Um, especially, you know, you guys have grown up with a cell phone in your pocket and in your hands. That wasn't the case for me. Um, you know, when I was in high school, I had a pager. I really have no idea why. We thought it was cool. Um, and so I think for us, it was we were adjusting to cell phones just as you were growing up with them. Now we understand because, you know, adults, we live and we learn just like you do. Um, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And what I want for all of us, your teachers, myself, security, lead teachers, counselors, uh, and your classmates teaching to each other is what's appropriate. Um, so when there is that minor cell phone infraction, I want us to teach, you know, why is that not appropriate? When a kid's walking down the hallway talking on the phone, I say, hey, you can't talk on the phone walking down the hallway. And the kid says, why? Well, your teachers, I mean, it was unanimous when we met in a small group. There was about 20 teachers here after school talking about it. Nobody wanted that kid suspended. What people want is for that kid to understand, you know what, I get it, you gotta talk to your mom. Step in my office and do it. Nobody needs to hear your business. Um, and I think if we approach it that way, it's less about the punishment and more about teaching those proper behaviors. Because when you get to college, some of your professors won't care if your phone is out. Some of your professors will kick you out of class. When you get kicked out of a college class, you don't go to the lead teacher. You, you're just out. Um, and we don't want you to experience that when you're paying $50,000 a year for your education. Okay. I hear you got input from some students. How do you think the whole student body will react to the policy? I'm, I'm excited. I, I think the student body as a whole here does the right thing. The student body as a whole demonstrates maturity, class, excellence, day in and day out. Um, you know, let's be honest, a number of classrooms in this building um, we're already allowing limited cell phone use, right? We've allowed it in the cafeteria. 
uh, when we had our scripts for being on time to class in the beginning of the year. Part of that script was that we would allow cell phone use in the hallway prior to the start of first period, and then we would revisit that. But we want to stay true to our word. You know, we've seen that, you know, there were, we haven't seen, you know, an increase in issues when students are allowed to use the phone. To be honest, you know, the kid who's got their music on walking down the hallway, they're in their own little world. It's just them and, you know, Meek Mill headed to class. They're <laughs> fine. Um, and I think, you know, so we've seen that maturity. Uh, I think the students here who, you know, whether it's in the cafeteria, the hallways, in my office, who approach me and others and say, hey, can we look at this? I, I think it really just comes down to they, they want to be trusted. And the students want the kids who can't fall in line. Uh, sometimes the students want them punished more than we do. Um, so I, I think that we're all on the same page here. Okay. Can you go over the policy again? Sure. So green is just for the hallways and for the cafeteria. It's not during instructional time. And that is, you know, there's no talking on the phone, there's no recording, no taking pictures, uh, especially without people's consent. Uh, but other than that, you know, if you, I, I, we don't really care, if you're gonna send a text message in the hallway with, during, in between classes, send a text message. So long as that text message isn't something that's inappropriate and leads to an issue in the school, that's fine. You wanna listen to music, again, so long as it's not country, we're okay with that. <laughs> um, you know, because we trust you. Um, you know, if you wanna sit in the cafeteria while you eat your lunch and you wanna watch something on YouTube, as long as it's school appropriate, knock yourself out. Now, if it's not school appropriate, we're going to let you know. You know, it's not that we can't look over your shoulder and see what you're watching. So everyone should keep that in mind. Um, yellow zone is used during instruction, and the teacher sets the rules for that. So it's at their discretion. At their discretion, absolutely. And it can be different from time to time. Uh, and then red means that the phone should not be seen. Um, you know, it's a, it's a cell phone free zone for that period of time. And some places will always be that way bathrooms, locker rooms, uh, the counseling office, and the lead teacher's office. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just I, I thank everyone in advance, uh, and I thank you for helping me get the word out. I'm Jerome Campbell. I'm here with Principal Ross to speak about the new cell phone policy. Thank you, Principal Ross, for being here.